So even with a paperless warehouse, at some point we're going to need to print some things. Um, it could be that we need to print labels to identify products or identify pallets. Um, it could also be that we're printing dispatch documentation. So thinking about that final step, the last thing that happens before we send it to our customer, what do we print and what do we put in the box? What goes in the parcel? And thinking even beyond that, how does what we put in the parcel then link into the returns flow that we've got? So, you know, are you doing a, you know, are your return instructions going in the parcel going out? Are your return instructions going to vary depending on who you're sending it to? Um, so this is an important part of the flow. So there's operational stuff for the warehouse and then there's also that final dispatch. I want to really, really focus in on, on the final dispatch documentation going out to customers. Um, that's the area where um, we're using using a, a, a system gives a big advantage over doing things manually. Um, just to kind of frame this problem, let's talk about some of the challenges that companies have with printing. So it's super common that um, warehouses don't have any means of printing barcode labels for products. Um, they may be using a separate label printing software, something like Bartender to export all their product information, then print barcode separately. That's a pain to manage. It's a pain for the IT team to have to deal with. On the dispatch document side, uh, it could be that you can make changes to your documents, but you need your IT team involved. So you might be using something like NetSuite and to make document changes in NetSuite, you may only be comfortable with the developers doing it or only a, you know, a subset of the team being involved. Um, you're also going to find that uh, there's a even if you've got different templates, you need to make sure the right templates printed at the right time. So it could be that you have to um, filter orders to find the right you know group of orders together and then manually select them all, print using the right template, get all of them printed off and then do them separately. That could be having an impact on the fulfillment workflow, particularly if you're paper based. Um, if we're pre printing lots of documentation obviously that can create a bottleneck because the warehouse team can't work till everything's printed um and really back to that kind of filtering of the orders that links into what you'd need to do for like b2b customers where they say oh you're sending us this beautiful a4 document could you also put on here our purchase order reference number and could you do it as a code 128 barcode for example so we want to try and comply in those situations. We want to make it as easy as possible for the warehouse to be doing their thing um, and operating in the correct way with your suppliers. So there's a couple of things uh, that I'm going to talk about. The first is like the two types of printing that we support through PeopleVox. Um, one is going to be like your thermal labels. So stuff like this, where we're just printing basic document order information from a thermal label printer. That's the first kind. Second kind we're going to be thinking about would be printing more of a, well, actually, this is a good example of what can be done on thermal. You don't just have to have that, you know, the standard shipping label printing. This company has a, a wider printer, six inch wide, I think, a bigger thermal label to try and avoid having those um, those big laser jets at the pack bench. But I think there's some other shots from their warehouse where they have, um, where you can see they are actually using an A4 printer. Um, and there's some examples of the other kind of label types you need to design and print. So labeling up your picking trolleys. If you're doing a, a pick and sort to trolley or even a multi-order batch pick into a trolley, you're gonna need to label up all of your barcodes for the trolley locations, you're also going to need to label the actual uh, the bins that, that the products sit in. So you can see all of these locations have got label templates in against them. You may want to do some things, you know, brand them up, put your company name on them, state whether they're bulk or pick locations. Um, there's really a lot, a lot that you can think about doing here. Um, 
I think the headline is that you don't need to be using an outside company to come in and label your warehouse. Um, you don't need to use a special piece of software to design um, and print all of the different barcodes that you need. And this is an example of different uh, package sizes. So at the point of dispatch, they scan the different barcodes and it captures a different package type that then takes the, the width, height, depth of the box and um, adds that to the weight of the items to get the total, uh, the total dimensions and weight of the package to send that accurate information to the, um, to the courier via the shipping API. So yeah, there's some of the applications of, of why we need to print things. Um, thermal labels dominating that. There's also this need for these A4 documents. Um, these are usually for, for B2B fulfillment now. B2C, um, particularly at high volume, you're going to be putting in a lot of packing benches. Um, the IT maintenance on having lots of laser jet printers on all those packing stations, the tone of the ink, the cost of printing the paper, and the fact customers don't want to receive paper anymore. Um, by and large, they just think it's a waste of paper. Um, when you get an email anyway from Amazon telling you what they're shipping, and if you're shipping the right thing, I don't need a piece of paper with someone's name in blood to prove that they've picked the right thing. We're trying to get rid of all of those types of checks. Um, so yeah, we have these thermal printers, Compatible printers use ZPL, which is Zebra Programming Language. Um, that's the the language that Zebra produced. That's what their software uses, um, and it's kind of the pretty much the global standard of um, of label printing uh, language. And then you've also got these generic printers, um, which don't use ZPL, um, and uh, they're managed in a slightly different way through PeopleVox. Um, we only use the generic printers for the A4 dispatch documentation. Everything else is is driven through the ZPL. Um, so let's talk next about the actual thermal label design and the printing of those designs. Um, the recommended uh, piece of technology for actually designing um, Zebra labels is, is just a free software provided by Zebra themselves. Zebra Design of Essentials is the latest at, at the point of this recording. Um, it is a, you know, it's what you see is what you get. It's got a very simple Microsoft Office si style um, interface. It's pretty easy to use. Um, in combination with this, you also get a, uh, a download from PeopleVox, which is a list of all of the um, variable field references um, for a lot of these templates like locations items um, even like sales orders or dispatch uh, templates um, we've got a lot of uh, standard templates that you can take and edit on top of um, so you you edit them in a in a zpl format and then you export to a dot prn which gets uploaded into PeopleVox. Um, and the we can give you the the raw files to build on top of you know if you see within our um template gallery one you like or the team will share with you examples for all of these types of things but you're going to be labeling products for sure um containers are like uniquely serialized holders of inventory so it could be like a pallet where you um actually print a uniquely serialized barcode to go on each pallet that may need a, you will want to be able to design that label and, and print that information. And um, you can see in here, if you're printing containers, you can print all of this different information related to it. So some of this is uh, related to if you've actually picked to a container, you can print all that information. But just standard stuff would be the barcode, the name, um, and the type of the palette, well, the, well, the type of container, I guess.